Hello, valued viewers. I hope you are all doing very well. Okay, so real quick, uh, the answer to my previous video's poll question of which locomotive did both Lima and Alco last produce in the Age of Steam? And the answer to that was, in fact, the Berkshire. Just a quick comment uh, regarding this story. Uh, several years ago, uh, I had actually come across the story and bypassed it and came across it uh, since maybe a couple few times and did the same. And I really wish I hadn't because this is just a really fun story that describes how one American company refused to be denied and persevered and did what it took to earn themselves a major sale. For not only then, but all the way to today. Because this invention is still used by every major railroad company in the world. So let me know in the comments below if this story made you smile like it did me. Alright, so the story begins in 1930 with the Timken Company, a manufacturer of roller bearings, saw a great opportunity to increase its sales. Which of course is not unlike any other major company then or today and they targeted railroad rolling stock and locomotives. After all, there were tens of thousands of railroad locomotives, not to mention freight and passenger cars, all of which ran on traditional friction bearings. Okay, so for the more casual fans here, what exactly is a friction or roller bearing? Okay, so friction bearings are like plain bearings. Think like a crankshaft bearing in your car's engine, uh, whereas roller bearings are like the bearings in your car's wheel hubs. Roller bearings are far superior because they're smaller, lighter, and can be lubricated with grease. And in a locomotive, uh, these bearings are located in each of the wheels of the rolling stock or a locomotive or later even the valve gears of a locomotive. Okay, so to return to the story, um, in Timken's thinking, uh, since each locomotive and, and uh, boxcar and whatnot use dozens of bearings, the revenue potential for them was just enormous. And all they needed to do was just simply convince the railroads, right? Not so easy. Because the sticking point was with the railroad industry in itself, of which had a stubborn history of conservative approaches toward new products. And really, you can say that for just about anything, whether it be business or even ourselves, we just don't like change. Simply stated, railroad managers were particularly skeptical of wonder products that promised to revolutionize the industry, of which proved to be worthless or worse, detrimental to the operation. So, despite Temkin's stated advantages of using their tapered roller bearings, which promised to save the railroads millions of dollars by reducing friction and easing maintenance costs, the railroads were nonetheless slow to take advantage of the new product. Timken had wanted to demonstrate the advantages of roller bearings by equipping a locomotive with them, but initial offers to equip existing locomotives were refused because railroads wanted no part of the test. And this is where the story brought a smile to my face because what did Timken do? They decided to order their own brand new locomotive to demonstrate their new roller bearings. So Timken goes to Alco and ordered a brand new 484 uh, Northern state-of-the-art steam locomotive to its own specifications. And Timken's 484 Northern was a very unique locomotive. The first unique thing uh, about it was it was built to accommodate clearances on virtually every American mainline, allowing the demonstration of their roller bearings all around the country with few restrictions. It was also designed for both passenger and freight hauling. It also featured 27 by 30 inch uh, cylinders, 73 inch main drivers, and an 88 square foot firebox grate. The locomotive itself weighed just 417,500 pounds, which was less than any other northern uh, running, worked on 250 pounds of boiler pressure, and can deliver 63,700 pounds of tractive effort, and had a booster that provided another 12,000 800 pounds of tractive effort. It was a very compact but yet very powerful Northern. So in 1930, Timken isn't really this rich mega company that it is today and it couldn't really afford this locomotive. So what they did next took some real stones to do because if this little stunner of theirs doesn't uh, pay off, 
that's pretty much the end of the Timken Bearing Company. So Timken got 52 individual part suppliers to contribute to the engine without billing until the locomotive had completed this test and could be sold. So Timken was able to get a special locomotive built and they numbered it 1111 and gave it a clever name, the Four Aces. And then to add to the catchiness, they added the playing card symbols of the heart, spade, diamond, and clubs on its sandbox number boards. It was painted dark green with gold trim, and Timken's uh, name was printed in serif uh, print on the tender. And there was no mistaking who this locomotive belonged to, or mistaking it for any other kind of locomotive for that matter. So the Four Aces uh, was delivered in April of 1930 and spent the following 21 months uh, touring the United States running on 13 different railroads. In that time it accumulated more than 100,000 miles and worked in all kinds of service. It held both fast passenger and freight trains alike. It achieved a top speed of 88 miles an hour. And folks, this is the astonishing part. It hauled a 132 car coal train up a 2% grade. But Temkin wasn't done demonstrating its roller bearings just yet. Because Temkin then pulled a median stunt and then had three young women pull the engine up with a rope in front of eager reporters. As if the rest of it wasn't enough, this stunt was effective and drove home the point. A locomotive on roller bearings was far easier to move than one with conventional friction bearings. Reduced friction simply meant that the locomotive would have greater starting power, would require less lubrication, and then less maintenance. Roller bearings were also far less likely to suffer the dreaded hot box, which was a costly and sometimes disastrous flaw caused by an overheated journal bearing. Simply stated, roller bearings were no gimmick and not just a cheap trick. They really actually worked. And to further hammer out the, uh, the actual maintenance savings, uh, you know, cost in maintenance uh, for using roller bearings, after its first 100,000 miles, the four aces bearings showed no appreciable sign of wear. So quite obviously, Timken's uh, investment in the four aces locomotive really paid off. Because soon thereafter, roller bearings were a standard item on every new locomotive, and some were later even equipped with roller bearings on the side and main rods and the valve gear uh, in addition to the axles. And Timken also went on to sell roller bearings for all railroad rolling stock, and today roller bearings are simply standard equipment on all the axles of all the railroads. And as for the Four Aces, it had a long and productive career after its brief stint as a Timken advertising model. Its firebox was damaged, however, while running on the Northern Pacific. So the railroad bought the locomotive after hassling with, with Timken over who was going to do the repairs and it joined Northern Pacific's pioneering roster of 484s. It was renumbered on the Northern Pacific as 2626 and served the Northern Pacific for nearly 25 years before being retired in 1958. And the last note for this video is the Northern Pacific engineer ran the water level down on the four aces and damaged the crown sheet. Now what is it with uh, engineers back in those days? Did they have some kind of death wish or something? What was their fixation with running on low boiler water? If you guys have any clue about that, let me know in the comments below because this, that's just nuts. And with that, I'll wrap up the video uh, by saying thank you for watching the video. And if you enjoyed the content today, please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, and uh, turn on all of your notifications. And also, uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, please visit our print shop on Nickel Plate Limited uh, on Etsy.com. Thank you once again.